Trapping and catching your own bait has some obvious advantages. Cost and availability are two things that come to mind. Buying specialty baits like frogs and crawfish can get expensive. Not to mention that your bait store may simply not have what you want when you need it. Dan Gapen has been relying on Nature's Bait Store for many years. Here's Dan to show you some homegrown live bait savvy. Frogs make a great bait, especially in late fall and on rivers and then in the, in the spring uh, in lakes say, when frog migration's on. I got a frog, I use a, just a regular live bait net. I catch a lot of stuff live bait with it. And here we are, here's a frog. Cute little fella. Oh, pretty lively. You gotta be quick enough to grab them when they come in the net. They make great bait uh, for river fishing and for lake fishing. Lakes in early spring into July, rivers in the fall. In the fall when the migration of frogs is going upstream in rivers, they make a great bait. So I'm gonna show you another little tip here, how to make a frog box. And uh, the easy way, I, matter of fact, I'm gonna put this frog right in here and I'm gonna show you how to make this box. It's probably a better box than, than you can find at most of the sporting goods stores. It's really simple. All you need, an old coffee can, some 3M tape, plain old silver tape, a piece of rubber and you gotta cut it the width of the, the can and then put some slices in it like that, sort of a starburst pattern, and a punch and a knife. This rubber I'm using is from an old inner tube. You can buy one for 50 cents at some of the old tire shops or find one out behind the garage or you may want to have one in your own garage. But what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take some 3M tape and run it around the top of the can like this. One row of tape. Okay, now you take your rubber and lay it on top and fold it down and start your first round this way. Okay, just keep folding as you go around the can. Okay. It takes a little bit of little ingenuity or, or uh, imagination on your part to get this thing all stretched around like this, but once you do, you've got a, you end up with a pretty good frog box. I'll show you here in a second. It doesn't matter if it's real tight on there. Matter of fact, a little looser is better, okay? All right, now, cut the 3M. You got it sealed on there pretty tight. All you do now is you take your knife and run it in here and run it across about like that. Make a slit, okay? Take a paper punch, plain old paper punch. To grab one of your kids' paper punches and punch either end. And the reason for that is where the cut ends, and the reason for that is that you want to, come on, there you go. When you put your hand in there, it won't rip the rubber any farther. Now you've got yourself a frog box. There you have it, inexpensive frog box. Really works, I've been using it for years. It doesn't take much to make it, just a little ingenuity and a little forethought. Now let me take you down to the local creek and show you how to catch crayfish. And between the two of them, frogs and crayfish, you'll have live bait throughout the fishing season. Hey, you know folks, uh, crayfish make a really great bait and often your sport shops don't have them in stock. We're gonna show you a little spot here that you can catch a lot of crayfish in. See that rocks right in there? There's a lot of series of rocks in here. Wherever you find rocks, you find crayfish. And I'm gonna bait the trap and uh, this is one way you can get a year-round supply of crayfish. No matter if your bait shop doesn't have it, you can get it in this spot if you've got a little creek near you or a river. And we're going to bait this trap with that sucker, going to cut it in half, and uh, crayfish come to meet. So I'm going to cut him in half and use him for, for bait in the crayfish trap. Leave his entrails and everything in him. Take a trap, open it up, dump your uh, sucker minnows in, and seal your, your trap. All right, now here, make sure you've got enough line that you can tie it off to a small tree or something, and you want to throw your trap in deep enough water right at the edge of the rocks, right like that. The crayfish will come to it because of the scented bait in it, and uh, it's a simple matter of uh, coming back in a few hours or leave it overnight. Crayfish work at night uh, an awful lot and that's probably the best time to retrieve it. So I like to put, I like to put the trap in 
uh, in the evening and pull it out in the morning. Well, it's the next morning and we're gonna go see what happened and how many of these things we caught, how many of these crayfish we got. We've got the trap is probably got worked last night after dark pretty well. The first four or five hours of dark seemed to be the best time to catch crayfish. And, uh, and we got some in there. Oh yeah, how about that? Those little suckers. Look at that. They haven't eat up, eaten up all the sucker. I can throw it back in there and catch some more if I need them. But there you go. Look at that. All right, folks, let's uh, take these crayfish and go up and try them out in the river. They'll catch everything from catfish to smallmouth bass to walleyes. I'm, I'm just anchored up on a, on a cat hole. Here we, we've got nice fast water here, rocky, it's shallow, and we're gonna fish frogs for a cat. And when you do that, unlike a smallmouth, you'd leave them alive and kicking, but here I'm going to uh, do that and probably give him a little scenting. And he's dead, and hook him right under here, right out the top of the nose, and uh, we'll work straight downstream, we'll straight line for him straight down. I've got a bottom walking on it, on there. And we just sit and wait. A unique variation on bottom walkers is a gapin' spinner rig bottom walker for fishing in current. At rest in current, the spinner revolves, maintaining slight pressure that is transmitted down the line to the angler. When a fish picks up the bait, the spinner stops spinning and telegraphs the bite to the angler. There he is. Uh -huh. There's the indicator, the strike indicator. The frog is still there. He didn't get the frog, he's still there. Come on, catfish. Now I can skid him up here. Holy mackerel. The frog fell off at the last minute, but there he is. By the way, the best way to hold him is right underneath like that. You get those up against those mad toms and so on. But that's a nice cat. There, I had to get my pliers out. I couldn't get the hook off. You know, I'd probably been better off with the barbless hook. I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna let him go and uh, Wait for one of you uh, folks to come over here and catch him. He's gone. All right, now, folks, what you want to do is, you, with your pop and your beer or your night crawlers, whatever you got, you want to carry your crayfish in a container. Oh, say an old Cool Whip uh, tray, and uh, you keep them in a little grass in here. I'm going to get one that's the right size. You just keep them in there and keep them cool. That keeps them dormant. Now. We're gonna river hook them right here under about the third section back, about three sections back, sort of off to the side so you don't hit that nerve nerve that comes down through the center of the tail and out the back. Now he'll ride that way in the water. Up instead of if you hooked him down or through the side, he'd run run crooked. And I like to pinch his claws off. That sucker's got they're too mean. And fish don't like those when they're when they're real aggressive like that. The fish have to be real aggressive to take them. But there he is. Got him rigged. Got him on a about a number one aught short shank offset eagle claw style hook, about six inches up to your shot, and just enough weight to get him down in the water. That's all you need. I'm gonna flip him right in that little eddy behind the rock and see what we can catch. There he goes. That's a better fish. There he is. And nothing like live bait, folks. Oh, he's not real big, but he's a nice little smallmouth. Look at that. You notice I'm fishing right under the boat, too. That's another nice thing about live bait. You can, you can fish right under the boat. And in rivers, 
Remember, current diffuses the, the, the amount of sound and everything that you have in a river, so you can fish real close to the boat. Matter of fact, sometimes I dabble right underneath the boat for, come here, Smalley. Come here, Mr. Smallmouth. All right, there he is, live baiting. My crayfish is gone, but that little gold one-odd hook is setting the jaw pretty hard. Nice little smallmouth. Nothing works better than live bait at times, especially when fish are tough. We're gonna let this guy go, and uh, for one of you to catch, he's a nice little little fish. There you go, Mr. Smallmouth. He's going right back under that rock, right where I caught him. Nothing like live bait when times are tough. Gotta try it. And there's some little secrets that we've tried to show you today that will help you. So remember that. Crayfish, frogs, later on in the season are very, very good. Night crawlers in the spring will work for you, as will minnows. But as the season progresses, as your summer get, warms up or as your season progresses, go to live bait such as crayfish and frogs.